Hey, welcome back uh, to Joy News Prime with me, Arab Kumsin, and joining me now is uh, Sandra. Hello, Hello. Hello. There's more to talk about on the Nigerian situation. I know. You know, um, the attack, a lot of people have been reading meanings into it. People are saying that, yeah, the retail loss issue has been an issue for some time mm -hmm. now, but also people are saying that... It might have been prompted by the recent kidnapping Exactly. Well. So okay. we have a lot to talk about All because right. the Take ministry has been responding. All right. All right. Hello. Good evening. My name is Sandra and I'm Afen and I'm here for Business. Trades and Industry Ministry has described attacks on foreign retailers in Kumasi as unfortunate. Speaking to Joy Business, Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry, Carlos Ahinkra, called on all parties to exercise restraint to allow governments handle the situation. Um, the in favor, let me say, of any uh, um, actions that would um, unleash um, forceful ejection or put our um, brothers in the sub-region uh, or traders, investors in Ghana in any jeopardy. Um, it is just unfortunate that people would alienate um, other people just because of happenings and occurrences in the country. And um, I'd like to take advantage of this um, opportunity of this uh, situation to let our countrymen understand that they should exercise restraint and let us separate this situation from um, what has become an abatros around our neck that we are trying to find solutions to. Yes, we know that um, there's been some kidnappings in the country. Nobody is happy about it. We have tried very hard to find a, re a way around um, the security situation uh, in terms of uh, trying to solve these problems. Uh, there are challenges, which I'm sure the security agents are up to. But it does not mean that everybody who is a foreigner on our soil is involved in this kind of exercise or in this kind of, um, um, you know, um, atrocity. Um, by so saying, I am appealing to our traders and, of course, our um, market people to allow government and, by extension, the Ministry of Trade find a lasting solution to these uh, problems. We believe that the trading business, which of course have been hijacked as a matter of uh, fact by um, some uh, of our brothers, our colleagues in the, in the sub-region, uh, and therefore putting our uh, own traders or own countrymen at a disadvantage, is not a problem that we can run away from. Unfortunately, in the ECOWAS protocol, there's a non-discrimination clause which we cannot separate ourselves from. To other stories now, central bank governors in the West African Monetary Zone say they are committed to ensuring the convergence criteria for member states before implementing the single common currency for the zone by 2020. The assurance is coming from Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Maxwell Opuku. According to him, the partnership between the West African Monetary Zone and leaders of member states has generated intense pressure on the technical committee to meet the 2020 deadline. Discussions have far advanced to ensure that by 2020, all West African member countries have a common currency for trade and other transactions. The currency is expected to boost intra-African trade as well as ensuring an inclusive financial growth for the West African Monetary Zone. Speaking at the Swift African Regional Conference in Accra, Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Maxolopoku Afari, disclosed that all bottlenecks are being worked on by member states. He assured that the 2020 deadline for implementing the common currency will not be extended. Having a, regional, uh, a, a, a single currency is not only technical. So we have to work together with a strong political will. And you can see that we now have 
heads of state that are, have demonstrated strong political will. And in fact, they are the ones putting pressure on the technical team to make sure that we meet the 2020 deadline. So we are now seeing a system where both the technical and the political will are converging. And I believe that once that converges, we should be able to see significant progress, at least in terms of trade, then gradually we move towards a single currency across the region. Various payment systems by member countries will be captured in the implementation process in order to increase financial inclusion and drive intra-African trade among member nations. Importantly, should not leave behind the low-value transactions and where am I heading to? The transactions that involve mobile money payments that have been integrated as at this time, that is where the impact will be made. If that is onboarded as part of unifying the payment systems across the region, you'll be able to bring a lot of the informal trade across border into the formal system and enhance intra-regional trade, enhance growth, and also enhance the impact across the West Africa region. So we are the deputy governor was speaking on the topic, enabling the digital economy. Eben Sabote's support for Joy Business. Meanwhile, President Ekufuado says he's confident the new payment system law will drive innovation and help spread growth in the financial sector. According to the president, the country will soon be leading Africa in the digital payments with the introduction of some measures that have transformed its electronic payment system. He was speaking at the opening of the Sweet Africa Regional Conference in Accra. Countries are embracing fully the advancement made in the d digital world to help drive growth and increase productivity of their respective economies. For us in Ghana, we have made modest gains in this regard. Since my assumption of office in January 2017, We've leveraged on technology to help reform and improve our institutional and regulatory processes, to establish a digital economy that is supporting sustained economic growth and improving the well-being of our citizens. Conduct financial transactions and is rapidly promoting financial inclusivity in Ghana. The financial industry is, winning, is witnessing significant growth and with mobile money penetration in Ghana being the second highest in Africa, evidenced in mobile money transactions worth 213 billion CDs in 2018, up from 78.5 billion in 2016, we anticipate that with continued reforms to our payment systems, Ghana will have a strong competitive edge in the region for financial innovation and access to credit. Additionally, my government has committed itself to having digital systems manage all government receipts and payments by 2020. Coming up next is a compilation of some local stories in our summaries. The Daily Graphic reports a former Justice of the Supreme Court, Professor Justice Samuel Datiba, who was appointed the Commercial Division of the Accra High Court to arbitrate in the case of Unibank, has written to the parties involved in the matter to appear before him tomorrow, June 19, 2019. The appearance of the 16 shareholders, the receiver of the bank, Ni Amano Dodu, and the Attorney General will allow Professor Dateba as the sole arbitrator to determine whether or not the revocation of Unibank's Class 1 banking license by the Bank of Ghana was done in accordance with the tenets of the law. The Ghana Employers Association, GEA, has implored government to initiate discussions with Meridian Port Services over possible job losses for some 3,000 casual laborers at the Tema Port after the expansion project takes effect. The GEA says Casual labor services at the port are currently being provided by the Ghana Dock Labor Company Limited, which is a company formed by dock labor employers and the Maritime and Dock Workers Union with the core mandate of supplying casual labor to their port. The Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources has begun an engagement with the Ghana Chamber of Mines and some mining companies to locally process 30% of the gold mined in the country. This is to tap into the synergies along the value chain of the mining industry to ensure that the state derives fair returns from the extractive sector.
For now, but when I return after 8 p.m., we'll be going back to the retail market to talk about issues emerging from the retail market and how the trade ministry is dealing with them. Stay tuned.